Welcome, everybody, to the Celebrity Hour podcast. I'm Brian Kluger, and we have a fantastic show today. I have a legendary, an intercontinental champion of acting and hockey, all the way from Ontario, Andrew Herr. Welcome to the show. Thanks, buddy. That was a great intro. That was a great intro. <laughs> oh, you're, you're very it's welcome. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you on. Again, we talked a year ago for season nine of Letter Kenny. Fuck you, Shorzy. And now I've got you all to myself. We're going to have some fun today. We're going to talk about season 10. We're going to be talking about some bourbon. We're going to talk about some music. Oh, Burp. my. But first, like in the movie, the sound of music we've got to start at the very beginning so andrew where did it all start with you in movies was it something you watched on television was it a play you watched where did it all begin uh it all began for me in high school theater so i moved to uh my dad had got a new job we had to relocate going into grade 12 and uh no, maybe it was because I didn't get a fresh slate, not a ton of friends. I had an opportunity to audition for this uh, competition called the Sears Drama Festival that my friend Christina Miller was going to put a play into. And, um, you know, my first audition was terrible as shit. Uh, I was like nervous, stuttering. I was like, this is stupid. Like, I, I got to go. I'm leaving. <laughs> and uh, I mean, she knew me from history class and we, we really liked each other. So she made it work for me. And uh First time I got on stage and we performed this play called Never Swim Alone by Daniel McIver. Um, yeah, I was hooked, but I still didn't know where I was going to go. I thought I was going to be like a stage actor and, you know, be very dramatic and do, you know, Hamlet on the stage and at the Stratford Shakespeare Festival. And I didn't I didn't know where where my where my acting career was going to take me. That's all I knew at the time. Uh, but I also had a deep passion for film. Sorry, there's like three animals in this in this house, so it's gonna be a lot of noise, potential noise. Um, but yeah, that that's how I got my start in, in acting. And then when I went out to Vancouver for UBC, the University of British Columbia, that's how I met like Jared and Dylan and all these guys on a beer league hockey team that kind of led me into Letterkenny. Well, let's let's go back to the theater. Let's go back, uh, to, the let's go back <laughs> to the theater. What part did you uh, what part did you play in Never Swim Alone? Uh, I was a character named Frank. Do you know the play? I do know the play. Yeah, I played Frank. All right. Um, it's been a while since I've revisited. Honestly, my memory probably won't do me. I just remember it was it's a two handed play for those who don't know it. Um, about these somewhat uh, antagonistic friends. Uh, and they just kind of go through these dream sequences that I can't, I honestly can't remember the full, the full play. I know that they're responsible for this girl's death uh, and they're kind of hashing it out in like this series of, of dream sequences. Um, it was a lot for Jordan Richards, um, who was, uh, had done a lot of plays by then kind of taught me how to act as we were rehearsing it. And there was a lot of lines cause it was just basically me and him for an hour and a half. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, of course the day we performed it, I was, I had like the flu or something, but I think it actually went my favor. I was so sick that I couldn't be that nervous. I just didn't really care. I was so brain dead. <laughs> that, uh, um, I was like, let's just do it. Let's just get it over with. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it was just, uh, it was a great time. That's good. I was about to ask like this, that being your first moment in front of people performing, what did you describe the feeling before you went on stage and started reciting the lines? I think uh, I, there was a deep fear of just like all the, it's like, you got to kind of just trust what you've, you've rehearsed, but uh, yeah, there was like a moment, not a deep fear, but a moment where like, Oh, like, Hopefully it all comes to me. Hopefully it all comes in my brain, like smooth. Cause you can't be thinking about your lines. You gotta be just in the moment. Um, so I just remember being like sick. I remember two things. I hope they don't hear me sniffle. I hope I don't like have a coughing fit and hopefully it all comes together where I don't blank on stage 
and look like a complete goober. Uh, those, are the, those are the three the three feelings that at the time went through my brain. Yeah. <laughs> From so, what I remember. Right, right. So did you have a moment when, you know, there was uproariously uproarious applause for your performance and you kind of stepped outside your body and you're like, whoa, I'm good. <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know if I had, you know what? So we, the play had been done a lot for this year's drama festival We because they always have a, is it an orator? Comes and talks after and decides which plays go on. They went with two other plays that were actually written by, by the class, but we won the acting award for that, that, uh, that uh, district. So we did, I knew we did really well and we got a lot of laughs and we had, we had a standing ovation. So, I mean, obviously a standing ovation feels good, but I think what felt the best was we were just out there, just Jordan and I just going off each other. And it was, you know, in a lot of ways, I still try to replicate that feel that first time I was on stage because it was just such an amazing experience. Um, and yeah, it's just there's nothing quite like being in front of a live audience because a live audience, your feedback is instant, like the feedback loop. You can just you can you can tell when people are are uh, are into it. Uh, you can tell that they are they've bought in and you can tell when you've lost them as well pretty quickly. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think that 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 instant feedback loop is is really, really exhilarating and a lot of fun. And it, I love film acting as well, too. It's just different. Right. You know, you have you know, you have action cut the energies with exist within the people you're playing with. But there is no you know crew are too busy, you know making it look good and getting everything set up. So they're not really too, too invested in how you're performing. So it's, it's really more dependent on the actors playing off each other on set, which in letter candy, we have no problem doing. Yeah. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> yeah. And you played hockey uh, as a kid, correct? Yes. Like and so, Canadian, played, right. uh, yeah. yeah. And so, being a hockey player and then transitioning to an actor, there's got to be some similarities going on stage. Cause you got like game face, bro, game face. Like, is there yeah. anything you take from hockey to acting that you remember? Uh... Yeah. There's actually quite a few similarities between like sports and, and entertainment. Cause I think, well, and acting, cause they are in a lot of ways entertainment. Um, yeah. The prep, like preparation game face, uh, like the, especially with Letterkenny, we're such an ensemble, like we are like, a, like in a lot of ways, a team. And so I learned a lot playing organized hockey in teams and like how, how you approach your role, knowing your role within the team, uh, being respectful of others, knowing, you know, if you have problems, knowing how to um, address those issues in a way that's conducive to both parties being happy. So I think there's a lot of parallels between what I learned in team sports uh, and how to, and it's me. I mean, I think I got a lot of maybe potential, some of my failings as a, as a team member out in hockey. So I knew not what, to, I knew what not to do in the entertainment world. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely a lot of parallels. Um, and, uh, you know, all, all my worst hockey games, I, I put so much pressure on myself to play well. And like some of my best games ever is when I, was relaxed and almost it's not that I didn't care but I was I was just I didn't really I guess I didn't really care I was just, you, I was you so, went out just to have fun yes exactly exactly that's the way that's the way to do that's, it I, that's the way to do it yeah <laughs> it is uh did you play any other sports other than hockey yeah growing up I played like a I played baseball up to a point uh played soccer up to a point um I really liked uh Muay Thai and boxing I was doing it for to train for hockey and I remember I wanted to do it and my parents were like there's no there's no fucking way you're doing this dude like and I I think I think the at the time I was kind of pissed off because I thought it was pretty good but thankfully my parents were smart and they're like no and I I but I, I like I, I really like those sports and I, I love skiing and tennis. Those are kind of like the, the things I do now is skiing and tennis is my big one. Play hockey when I can. Committing to a you know a beer league team right now is 
well, especially with COVID and everything, it was like so ridiculous. Had to like show up to the arena dress, and I was like, nah, I ain't doing that. So, but uh, <laughs> but uh, definitely like to get on the ice when I can. And um, but yeah, those are the things I, I did growing up. Um, and I loved movies. Like, man, there's so many, especially in high school. There's a lot of. I, I had this accounting teacher, Mr. Turkowitz, I think his name was. Um, you know, he had to call my parents a number of times because I would, I'd stay up all night watching like one or two movies. Well, usually two, sometimes three, and I'd just sleep throughout accounting. I'm pretty sure he passed me just so he'd never have to see me again because he was the only accounting teacher. In there. <laughs> um, so that you know, that was kind of what was going on when I was younger. Yeah. Oh my! Oh, to get out of that, you're just like, oh, I but I watched accounting movies. I watched like yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, I watched, Wall Street. Uh, yeah. yeah, Wall Street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I watched Wall Street and uh, Two for the Money. That's yeah. That's yes. right. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. And you mentioned I want now. I'm I'm very curious. You you said that you're like oh I I'm interested in uh, Shakespeare's plays on stage. Do you have uh, some memorable moments of reading Shakespeare or some favorite uh, uh, poems or stories by him? I, I mean, I've always been a huge fan of Macbeth. One of, I, so I actually, um, and another really great actor, Mark Ian uh, Tarasuk, he's probably gonna, if he ever hears this, gonna be mad because I think I butchered his last name. But so it's really funny, him and I have the same agent, but we actually got into the same Stratford. The Stratford Shakespeare Festival had this kind of a theater intensive program that uh, people could audition for. And we both got into that before, it was like a pre-theater school um, type of program. And one of the coolest things ever is I saw Christopher Plummer uh, perform The Tempest, he was Prospero at mm-hmm. the Stratford Shakespeare Festival. And that, that play now is probably just one of my favorites. Uh, because of that because he just I mean Christopher Plummer live was insane um but I mean Macbeth is is one of my favorites and um I do like Hamlet but I'm not I wouldn't say I'm a diehard Shakespeare fan I I definitely appreciate it and I think it's I understand why people don't like it and understand why people do like it it's you know, it's not the most accessible language, especially now, but if you really look into it, some of the writing's hard to beat. I, ironically, I think, and that's not ironic actually, but I think Letterkenny is a little bit in a lot of ways like Hillbilly Shakespeare. Right, right. Because it the, has like, is- just because the rural, like the wordplay and the rhythm and then like the rural um, slang that you get in Canada, I think, I mean, it's not, I'm not I don't say hillbilly in a in a, an offensive term I mean just just because I think it sounds better <laughs> no it is it is it is hillbilly Shakespeare it, it really is because yeah. like you said there is a beat there is you know a, yeah. a certain language and dialect to it that you know is very difficult to to read and recite um no that's yeah. great no it's good deal Shakespeare knew letter Kenny and Shakespeare together together so, who knew <laughs> together that's good uh and before we get to letter Kenny we got to talk about a little bit about the goon last of the enforcers you were in that right yeah it was yeah that was that was really cool um I mean my role is I was kind of like a glamorized extra in that movie which was fine because I knew that going in but it was so cool because I've always I mean, growing up, American Pie in my generation was just, you know, it hit a certain chord. And I I mean, Sean William Scott is hilarious. And so to be on set with that guy, who's one of the nicest guys I've ever met, um, was really, really cool. And to meet Jay Baruchel and watch him direct and all the other people on that show, was, uh, on that movie, sorry, was, was uh, a really cool experience. And Nate and I were living together, which was fun. So that was, that, that overall, I look on that memory very, very fondly um and yeah yeah that's good no that's great that's great um and then you came across letter kenny and we're on season 10 right now and i just have to remind our listeners and our viewers that i was at the north america premiere of letter kenny at in austin texas uh at fantastic fest and Um, i remember watching it was like I think they debuted the first four episodes at the festival and Mm -hmm. after watch because I had no idea going into it I was like okay this little booklet says like this is funny Canadian tv show fuck it let's do it um (laughs) and 
since then and before Hulu, uh, it I anybody I could talk with, anybody on the street is like, got guys, girls, everybody. Letter Kenny is like the next big show. Like this is the funniest fucking show ever made, and it's smart, it's witty. So I just love that it's been going on for ten seasons, and so going on for 10 seasons to you, do you still look forward to going on set every day and seeing everybody again with every season? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. hundred um, percent. I mean, we, we all genuinely love each other. Like we've had, uh, it's been such an amazing ride. And I think actually because of COVID, we, because we had to take a longer break than normal, we realized truly how much we like working with each other. And when we came back to, to film season 10 and 11, we were so stoked. We didn't care what the COVID policy was, none of that. We were just like, it was refreshing to be back on set uh, with everybody, having a ton of laughs on and off set. And um, it'd be impossible to say that I don't have a good time uh, filming Letter Kenny with that group. Uh, everyone's so talented. Everyone brings a different, different element to the show. And uh, yeah, just truly, truly a great group a group of people. No, yeah. it really is. And in season 10, I've got to ask, what is the secret to flexing certain parts of the anatomy? <laughs> uh, so actually, luckily, Jared gave Bill and I a heads up on that about a month in advance. And I must admit, my I've told this a few times now, but I don't know why, but my left butt cheek could just, I could not flex it individually or on its own. Like I'd flex and just my, my right bumper would go, but my left bumper was out. Uh, so I, uh, um, I basically had to like do butt flexes every day. Like it didn't, it was like if I was sitting at the computer, I just start flexing my left butt cheek and like slowly day by day, I'd get it more and more and more and more flexibility. And then, you know, uh, on the day it worked, we, I, I, so was, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I got paid to, you know, do butt training and flex my butt on TV and, oh, spoiler alert, sorry, I won't, uh, for those who are listening, um, but yeah, no, it was, it was, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> like, 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 I mean, you know, we're just like the most part, of, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, no, it's, I mean, but it's part of it. And it's, it's amazing that, you know, it's part of the character and you got to do it with a, like one of your brothers, basically, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill and I are brothers. And, uh, you know, there, we had a lot of laughs doing, filming that. Um, and you just can't, like, going into something like that, you can't take yourself seriously, even if you wanted to. <laughs> so, so. We just had a ton of fun and we just realized how goofy we were. the rollerblading portion. We were in this park and we were kind of doing a gorilla style. And there was a lot of um, elderly people living in that area. And we started to notice people walking by and like some trucks were like would circle back. And I'm sure they were just like, what in the fuck is going on over there? But, <laughs> but uh, we had a ton of fun doing it. And it was refreshing to do something outside of out of hockey for Riley and Jonesy, something that in and try to retain that previous glory we once had in at the beginning of season one with the with our junior career. You know, we've kind of jokingly said that between each season we've had a, a new concussion and we've kind of been in a free fall ever since. We just haven't quite got back to where we thought we think we should be and so whenever we get somewhere it's usually uh it doesn't work out or it gets taken away from us like you see at the uh beginning of season 10 so um yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> so, great that's great yeah yeah and uh <laughs> I, another another question uh in season 10 i know there is an episode about uh concocting the best caesars or for those in the states you know bloody marys is there a secret recipe that you like for your caesar slash bloody mary i i just love a, a ton of horseradish Ooh, a ton. so you're yeah. spicy yeah i love it spicy yeah and there's actually um i don't like it to be a full meal but i like when they put a lot of 
just a lot of things in it. But yeah, it's got to be really, really spicy for me. So is there anything like you want to have uh, on your Caesar, like your Bloody Mary that hasn't really been done before, like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and a chocolate cake with your <laughs> with your Caesar or something like that? Or do you, no, do you go with like no. barbecue and uh, bacon and stuff like that? <laughs> no, I can't. I'm, I've always been pretty happy with my Caesars. I love when there's candied bacon on it. Okay. Which you don't get too often. You usually get bacon, but it's not like candied. I actually, you know what? I'd love to try uh, smoked salmon added Ooh. to my Caesar. That, that hasn't happened for me yet. All right. All sure. right. That's nice. I yeah. smoked salmon. I got to try that now. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. A little, a little, we yeah. Add, um, add a little yeah. like toasted bagel with cream cheese and a little, a little, uh, no, salmon. No, awesome. no pastries. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Might be good. Might be good. Uh, so, in Letter Kenny season 10 as well, uh, you you get into some video games with the skids, right? Yeah. Yeah. Am I do you want me to say spoiler alert or should I go for it? Like go go for it. Go for I, it. Go for it. Yeah. I mean that that besides the butt flexing, uh Dylan and I were very much looking forward to that because we've always had a bit of a, a butting of heads relationship with the skids throughout the years. And uh, I think we've always prided ourselves on being a better than Chell than anyone in Letterkenny. And uh, it was just a really fun scene to play. Cause it's just sad. Like they, they beat us in the sport that we've claimed to be so good at over the years. <laughs> and uh, to have like uh, you know, it was fun to have a meltdown on the walls and uh, Dylan and I, yeah, we just had a lot of fun doing that scene. It was I, Tyler and Evan bring something you just never know what they're going to bring as far as energy and you just they I mean, they keep us on our toes on and off set so um anytime I get to they they're not my I don't want to pick favorites but I, I really love doing scenes with Tyler and Evan uh they're really really talented guys and so when I found out we were going to have a, a video game contest with them I was giddy <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good do you do you have any uh video games you love playing from your childhood up until now uh one of my favorites is call of duty that one i i've i've since high school that one's always been uh number one i actually in college really got into fifa because a lot of my friends were big fifa guys so i think call of duty and fifa were the big ones i did have a period of time where i was doing halo but I will. I'll yeah. agree. Call of Duty is a much faster pace. Yes. Than Halo yeah. and everything else. It is. It's, it's yeah. a good one. Modern Warfare, excellent. Yeah, it's such a good game. It is so good. Um, let's let let's talk a little bit about uh, what what is next in regards to Letter Kenny? Because I know you've filmed another season already, uh, and I guess y'all are going to keep going and until the end of time which i i hope that is the case but is is there a little just, anything you can talk about with the future yeah i mean i think i think it, first of all it'd be really funny to see dylan and i like 80 years old just still wearing <laughs> our, our beater shirts like flexing at people <laughs> just, just never just never 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 grew uh, um no we have so we're, well we're really excited to go on tour um, which is coming up shortly in the U.S. I've got tickets for it. I've got tickets for it. Yeah, it's going to be that. That is going to be crazy and a lot of fun. And we'll, we'll be filming another season. Uh, and then it's all kind of, uh, we'll see how things go. But I, I know everyone wants to keep doing it. And, um, you know, I, I try to keep it more uh, year to year. So we just finished finished what we did, and we have another one we'll be filming next year, and then uh, we'll see. Who knows? I, I think everyone would love to uh, keep doing it, and as long I a lot of the response from fans is not enough episodes, which is a great complaint. Mm -hmm. um, so we shall see. But I, I think I think without uh, saying too much, that we we have a good thing going, and. Uh, Everyone on the team knows that, and we'd like to keep going as long as it's as it's good. The quality's high, and because uh, I know Jared's quality over quantity, and um, 
we'd love to keep making it. Yeah. No, it's good. It's good. And I know you said something earlier about how you think Jonesy and Riley between each season have a concussion. And I just think like they're getting smarter and more cultured. And I'd love to see them, I don't know, like go out into the world and like report back to Letter Kenny on their adventures. And like, whoa, <laughs> I like it would be just so great. <laughs> I think that would be great too. Uh, you know, I, Dylan and I have always joked that there's, you know, like a lot of athletes, whether they're retired or they just didn't make it to a professional level, they go through this transition period where they're a little bit lost. Mm -hmm. um, and Riley and Jonesy have kind of gone through that in small, small doses, but they've always kind of found the way back to some version of playing hockey. Uh, I think it would be, like you said, I think it'd be great if they kind of now had to venture off into the world or even in the letter candy world where, you know, they had to find their place outside of hockey and, just to see how they would deal with that, I think could lead to a lot of funny situations. Um, but also Jared and Jacob, they knock it out of the park every year with the scripts they give us. So I, I would never dream of telling Jared what to do. They do, um, they do, they, they, re yeah. they really do. Um, yeah. And moving from Letter Kenny, I want to bring this up because, you know, at the very beginning of this uh, show, we talked about, you know, it's uh, the last two years have been tough. It's been rough. It's been crazy. We're still here. And I'm just so happy. And it's a poignant issue that you're um, a mental health advocate. And I would like to know yeah. uh, how you got involved in that and your stance on the, how mental health is so important. Um. I think uh, for a number of reasons, uh, one being, I think that's kind of our, as humans, that's our new, new challenge across the board. Like it's kind of like the new frontier. There's a lot of things, you know, with social media and a lot of information flowing through our brains um, uh, that, you know, we can be, our, our body can be physically uh, in, a, in a situation, but so can our mind. And um, I think even through my own personal, I've never had any serious mental, mental bouts, but I mean, I've had my own bouts of, uh, you know, anxiety and maybe mild depression. And so, and I know other people who've had much more serious versions of it. Um, look at, I won't name names, but, and I have a, a dear friend who's got a yeah, pretty somewhat serious mental, mental health issues. So, I mean, I think that's one of the main reasons. And, um, you know, I, I know Bell's sometimes taking some flack for their their mental health campaigns, but at the end of the day, I think it's a good thing that they're promoting. And um, so it was, it, was an, it was an easy sell for me. And I just like anything, anything that's creating awareness to, to actually implement change, I'm a, I'm a fan of. So, and I think, yeah, mental health is a big one that we're starting to see, um, you know, uh, I don't want to step in, step in shit. Cause I don't know, I obviously don't know everything, but uh, you know, I think there's just, especially for young kids now, it's like a, it's like a minefield of what, you know, you got to go through. It's, I think every generation just has a different challenge. And I think younger kids now it's like the social media uh, I think is a big, a big proponent of creating some, some mental health issues that we didn't foresee happening, say 10, 15 years ago. So um, I think it's important for people to feel comfortable in their own skin because that's the best way for them to grow and not, uh, you know, not beat themselves up. And I don't, I just don't like the feel the, pe the, the feeling that people are hating themselves. Like I want everyone to feel good right. about themselves. You know? Right. Well said, well that's said, a, man. I think yeah. it's all important. Um, yeah. I have an important question for you, a serious question. Um, why are Gus and Uma the best pets in the world? The best pets in the world? <laughs> uh, there's so many reasons. There's so many reasons. Um, I mean, Gus is the, the, he is always so happy. You could be gone for a minute and he comes back and it's like, you've been gone for 10 years. He's so happy to see you. Uh, and and then Uma kind of coyly be uh, coy like behind him going hello, uh, but she she's got a lot of personality too, and they always they like to play, and I don't know, I just I love them so much. I mean, everyone loves their pets, and I, but that I think that the combination of her always wanting to play and always uh, Gus always wanting to snuggle, they're just like the perfect combination. 
For good, sure. good, good. Good to hear. Good to hear. Pets yeah. Are good. yeah. <laughs> I'm a crazy cat dad. We actually have, so Nate, Tyler, and I have a cat dad's group chat where we just send each other like cat moments we're like proud cat dads like it's just it's really <laughs> weird, but <laughs> that's, that's you know. amazing do y'all have a title for your group text chain <laughs> yeah it's called cat dads <laughs> okay okay <laughs> oh that's yeah. wonderful it's wonderful i love it okay so we talked a little bit about bourbon earlier so mm-hmm. uh you drink bourbon, I drink bur- bourbon, of course. What what are some of the best bourbons out there on the market right now that you're enjoying? You know, every time I, I've always loved Basil Hayden's. Oh, yeah. Basil, yeah, it's so good. Um, I always I always come down to the U.S. and I'm always like, oh, they just have so much more selection for bourbons. And it kind of makes me mad because in Canada, we don't have as much selection. But yeah, Basil Hayden's is, a, is my go to. I love Four Roses um i do like buffalo trace oh that's, that's I've had, a great I've, one i've actually try. tried pappy van winkle and i think it is good but it's not i still like i think basil hayden's is better um what what are some of yours i mean i love maker's mark um i, I like I love, yeah screaming, i love bland screaming owl screaming oh, yeah. owl is really good um, sorry go ahead no, I, lo- I love, uh, let's see, uh, Blanton's. Um, I love um, uh, the Derringer from Kentucky. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, Buffalo Trace, you said uh, that I love. Yeah, those are probably the top ones that I really like. Um, and of yeah. course, some of the whiskeys uh, like Abelur and Auschentaschen and the Bruch Lottie stuff of the whiskeys and stuff like that. I'm huge fan of you uh you, have you ever had red breast it's irish pot whiskey no i have not had red breast try it try red breast like okay. uh, there's you have the 12 year and then i think 15 year they're both really good honestly i think 12 years actually a, a little bit better but yeah red breast it's like an irish still pot whiskey it's delicious all right all right uh yeah. I, I love it i love it i could just, just sip on that the peatier, the better yeah. during the winter months. So that smoky flavor, it's great. Um, also, yeah. Yeah. Uh, moving on to <clears throat> what is your relationship with horror? And is it true that you are currently writing or have written a horror movie screenplay? Yeah, um, I, I, I think horror is just a fun genre. There's, mm-hmm. you know, it's not to be taken seriously, I love jump scares. I love the ridiculous situations they come up with. Um, I like horrors that aren't, I like that there's, I don't like gore porn. I like horrors that are scary, but they don't like, I like, I'm more in the Alfred Hitchcock vein where it's like, it's more implied than shown. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, so Dan Hirosh, who's a writer on Letterkenny, uh, his writing partner, Adam Feingold and I teamed up to write a horror film. Uh, we don't have an elevator pitch. We'd like just finished it. Um, like five days ago and we have it out to um some friends and a producer um but it's a pretty good i I don't say this often but we think we have a pretty good pretty good movie on our hands that um would appeal to cinephiles and it has a fresh take on uh, a lot of the horror tropes over the years a lot of there's a lot of um influence from scream i would say the scream trilogy because that's one of the horror films that really that really holds up um and we just had a lot of fun making it. They're just, so, they're fun to make, uh, to write and, and to make. So um, it's called Johnny Hollywood. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay, Johnny and, Hollywood. And, I like that. Is that a sequel yeah. to Doc Hollywood? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's an episode uh, in this season 10 of Letter Kenny of Picking Stones. And I just love that in this town, Letterkenny, or is I guess the real town of Sudsbury or whatnot, um, yeah. there's just a lot of beauty and a lot of cool things that you find in unexpected places, such as the picking stones, everybody getting together and just having yeah. a good time doing that. So to you, what remarkable things have you found in unexpected places? Oh, that's a good question. Um... So one, so one of mine, one of mine is I love when I go into like 
like a dive place or like a hotel and like the shoe shine stand looks like a Kingsley Game of Thrones type of throne, you know, <laughs> like a remarkable thing in an unexpected place, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, well, I have one. Re okay, so I'm down, I'm down actually in Ocala, Florida right now with uh, my fiance's family because they're really into horses and we're at this place. It looked, I mean, there's so many places in the U.S. like that where it's like you can't judge a book by its cover. We passed this restaurant called Shuck and Oysters, I think it was. It looks like a complete, like it almost looked like a homeless shelter. It was just so ugly and so beat down. And we went inside there, probably had the best fish and chips I've ever had in my life. It was so good. It was so good. The oysters were so good. They were so friendly um it was like very unexpectedly beautiful um and we stayed there for three hours so yeah. the best fish and chips are not in london they're in where they're in ocala florida like off the highway <laughs> <laughs> that's unbelievably good <laughs> yeah it was like it wasn't too breaded it was really fresh fish um and, and you know we got like we got to meet some of the locals there very very friendly people um and you know it's florida's i mean i don't know but florida gets like a certain reputation with like a florida man and you know the, the lawlessness that is a little bit less state but um i do i just i also love it so much yeah yeah that's, that's great <laughs> I, that's I, great I, yeah <laughs> um yeah. so the last time we spoke i asked were there any particular scenes in movies or television comedy wise that always stuck with you? And your answer was the flight attendant and in how I met your mother. So my, my return to this question, are there any particular scenes in movies, no matter what genre that have always stuck with you uh, that you'd constantly think about you, like you wake up and you're just like, fuck that scene is so good. I'm going to just bring this to my work and to life. Uh, yeah, I feel, okay, for, I, I wish I brought it up last time we were speaking. Uh, and I feel like most scenes from Anchorman still, <laughs> still stick out to me to this day. Like, even when they have, like, the huge, the huge brawl between all the news teams. Mm -hmm. And, uh... <laughs> brick like kills someone with like a grenade and like it just i saw that brick killed a guy the, there's so many lines from that that um i don't know them off by heart because i'm terrible at believe it or not terrible at remembering lines but <laughs> there's just that movie like even when uh jack black kicks his dog off the bridge <laughs> like there's just so many funny scenes well guess what now this is happening excuse me Excuse me, what are you doing? That's how I roll. And like the ridiculous, the ridiculous level is so high on that movie uh, that it's a classic. I mean, there's anything with Wolf, early Will Ferrell, like Step Brothers, uh, Ricky Bobby. Um, yeah, like all those movies, like I, Step Brothers is, yeah. Yeah, okay. Hey Derek, Spreckin' Z Dick. Step Brothers, what other? Actually, you know what? This show recently that I really, really like is Ted Lasso. Oh, it's That's so another... good. Yeah. Like, it's so heartwarming. It's so funny. Um, they, they ride that balance really well where it's not too cheese, but they have a little bit of cheese. Um, and yeah, that one. And I love Succession. Oh, Succession, Succession. is the best. Who's your favorite so... character in Succession? I think it's, it might have to be Tom. Tom I mean, so we, do you want a Tom and Greg spinoff show? Like I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Even like, I'll never, like, actually, it's, this is explicit, but I'll, I will never forget when he's bragging to people that he swallowed his own cum. Um, <laughs> it was insane. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Me and this girl, we go into the side room and we start making out. And then I'm touching her, and then she goes down on me, and then I splooge in her mouth, you know. And get, I know, I know. And get this, she kisses me and puts it back in my mouth, and I swallow. Which the cum? 
I know. It's so hot. You swallowed your own load? Yeah, I heard of it, but I don't. I, I didn't know it actually happened. No, I haven't heard about it before. I have. It's a thing. There's a word for it. And I can't remember what it is right now. It's so fucking hot. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. And you know, he's, he's always has, you know, he's got a million things to say, but he can't say it within that environment. And so he's just constantly left, like, I always feel so bad for him. He's always just being used and abused by whoever's in his back. And that's why kind of the Greg Tom relationship is so great because it's his chance to kind of be, you know, have power over someone. And um, it's, I found out he's British. So I was like, Whoa. he is British. So he was in the, he's the main actor in the original Death at a Funeral movie. And he's British. Yeah. And he's great oh, in what? it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's so, so good. Wild. Yeah, he's so good. Um, and I love him. The one thing in that show, I loved when him and uh, Connor are talking to Greg because Greg comes in, he's like, I got $5 million. And they constantly tell him like $5 million is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> my, so I was just talking to my mom and she said, apparently he'll leave me 5 million anyway. So I'm golden, baby. You can't do anything with five, Greg. Five's a nightmare. Is it? Oh, yeah. Can't retire. Not worth it to work. Oh, yes. Five will drive you un poco loco, my fine feathered friend. The poorest rich person in America. The world's tallest dwarf. The weakest strongman at the circus. <laughs> like, you're the, you're, the, you're the richest, poorest guy in the room. Like, you can't do anything with five. That's so good. I mean, that's so <laughs> <laughs> Or even at the begin, like the first episode where he buys, like, what's like a watch that says, you know, it's like, I know like you can afford everything. What's a watch that says, like, I care, but I'm not trying to suck, suck ass. And she's like, buys this watch and he's like holding it the entire time, waiting for this opportunity to give it to Logan. And then finally he does and Logan just pawns it off to that family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. But like encapsulates like Tom's relationship with everybody. He's just yeah, I, I, you feel bad for him, but then at the same time you don't. You know, it's the, yeah. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Oh well, that I, I could talk to you for another hour or so. But yeah, I could do. Like, we'll, we'll we'll talk again soon. Uh, the spotlight is on you now. Tell everybody uh, where they can find you online and on television. Uh, yeah, you can find uh, me on, on Instagram. That's when I'm most active. I would say at Andrew Her One uh, on Twitter for promotional things. Uh, I post on that every now and then. And and please check out Letter Kenny at uh, on Hulu in the U.S. or Crave in Canada. And I believe it's on Vice in Australia and New Zealand. Um, new seasons out. It's I think one of our better seasons uh, of late and a lot of, a lot of fighting, a lot of funny, funny scenes. So please check it out. And thanks for having me. It was a ton of fun. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it too. Thank you. Go down to your nearest Hulu and watch this. Yeah. <laughs>